Falter Riv got dinner. Tommy Dunshaw, Kun Guvna, Tig the Barra, Oravu. Dahi Ovrian is an endum at Is Michel Lorenly Karak Korki. The Cooper County on Dar Nimacht Inu. Welcome, everybody. We are here to honour the memory of Tig Barry. My name is David O'Brien, and I am City Librarian of Cork City. We will have a series of speakers for our event today which is Cork City Council's Decade of Centenary Programme 2021, honouring Tyg Barry. I would like to call on the Lord Mayor of Cork, Councillor Colm Kelleher, to address us. Uh, David. Elected members of Cork City Council, Oireachtas members, Chief Executive, family members of Tyg Barry, uh, Reverend Father Dermot Lynch, representatives of SIP, SIP2 in Cork GAA, St Vincent's Hurling and Football Club, and representatives of UCC. The 15th of November 1921 was an unseasonably fine day in County Down. Alderman Tyg Barry of Blarney Street was in great form. The first batch of internees from Ballykinlar internment camp were being released on parole. A persecutor to the general release would occur three weeks later and as the treaty was signed. Tyg was standing on a bucket near the fence saying his final farewells to the lucky ones who were, when a sentry ordered him back. He delayed slightly and was shot through the heart. According to a fellow internee, the sun seemed to pause in the heavens that day and word quickly spread that the much-loved Corkman was dead. The shock and horror that engulfed the camp was replicated across Ireland as the news was released. His father, or his funeral, was a vast spectacle. spectacle. A quarter of a million people lined the streets of Dublin, many tens of thousands turned out here in Cork on the 20th of November, as his remains were brought from the North Chapel to this spot here in the Republican plot. The funeral procession took almost two hours to pass a given point, while dense crowds lined the streets of Cork. The IRA closed off the area around the cemetery here and large crowds were kept behind cordons on all approaches. Only the clergy, chief mourners and wreath bearers and public representatives were allowed in the graveyard for the burial ceremony. Barry was laid to rest here alongside his lifelong friends and com comrades, my predecessors, McCurtain and McSweeney, as well as the six Ballycannon boys from Blarney Street and Blarney Road, all who have known since <coughs> they were in the youth. The graveside oration was delivered by the officer commanding of the Cork IRA, Sean O'Hegarty, who spoke of his GAA involvement and his journalistic career, which was said, brief but brilliant. As a trade union official, he had, and I quote, striven hard for the workers he lived for, the common man he died for, the whole of us. He had now joined the martyrs, concluded O'Hegarty, who, and I quote, made the supreme sacrifice for this, they will indeed be remembered by all the loyal citizens of the Republic. Three volleys were fired over his grave, scores of reeds were laid, and the last post was sounded. It is an honour to be back here today on the spot where this, all this happened to pay tribute to this proud son of Cork whose life was so cruelly lost over a century ago. Because the treaty split and the civil war followed so quickly, Tyg Barry's name soon got lost in the smoke and it is only now belatedly that he's been given his proper due by the city that he loved so well. Tyg Barry was a remarkable man. His British enemies described him as, and I quote, an utter disloyalist, a notorious and irreconcilable revolutionary who has taken an active part throughout his life in every rebel and revolutionary movement in Ireland, and they weren't far wrong. He, is highly he was a highly respected journalist and pioneer in the coverage of the Gaelic Games, and he was well known as a referee and administrator and helped to revive the GAA here in Cork. He even wrote the first book on the rules of his beloved game, Hurling and How to Play It. He served as a poor law guardian. He was a founder and member of the Irish Volunteers and the, and the first Sinn Féin in Cork. And from 1919 was a full organiser and branch secretary of the Irish Transport and General Workers Union in his native city. 
He served two terms in jail before his final in incarceration in Ballykinlar, seven months into his Cork jail sentence for a crime declaring that, at City Hall that we should strive for an Irish Republic, and nine months in British jails at the height of the Spanish flu pandemic for taking part in a non-existent plot with Germany. Meanwhile, he was the beloved guardian of his niece Molly and nephews Edward and Daniel, a duty he duly took up in 1913 following the sudden death of their mother, Tyke's sister, Mary Kate. And I'm delighted to welcome Barry, Brendan, Claire, Brenda, Tyke and Father Galvin here today. In January 1920, he was elected as an alderman to Cork Corporation. And a year later, when the council gathered to elect my predecessor, Don Lowe Callaghan, as Lord Mayor, he was arrested along with nine other councillors and aldermen and interned in Ballykinlar without charge or without trial. The next time he was in Cork was to be buried here on that sad and solemn occasion. It is my honour as Lord Mayor to pay tribute to Alderman Tyke Barry here today. His name has now re-entered public consciousness and thanks to the efforts of many. The historian Don Logo Drishkol has published The Utter Disloyalist, Tyke Barry and the Irish Revolution which is the first biography of Tig. Later this morning, I will be attending a tree planting ceremony in Tig's honour in his beloved alma mater at the North Monastery. This afternoon, a special exhibition of Tig Barry entitled Tig Barry, Rebel and Revolutionary will be open in, opened in the Cork City and County Archives in Blackpool. And tonight, City Hall will be illuminated in the colours of the national flag. So finally, and belatedly, this man, described by his fellow trade unionist, Cahal O'Shannon, as, and I quote, a characteristic product of Rebel Cork, courageous, kindly, generous to a fault, bold and daring and independent in speech and action, is being restored to his proper place in the pantheon of those that gave their lives so that Ireland might be free. Gormila Mahogaf Galair. Thank you, Lord Mayor. As you've referenced in your speech, Ty Barry was a man of many parts, and one of those parts was his involvement with the trade union movement. And to remember that moment and that time, I would like to call on Ethel Buckley, who is the Deputy General Secretary of SIP2, to address us. Lord Mayor, comrades, friends, relatives of TAIG, on behalf of the National Executive Council and members of SIP2, I'm greatly honoured to mark the life and contribution to his native city and country of trade union organiser TAIG Barry at this commemoration of his execution 100 years ago. Firstly, I want to pay tribute to those who have kept the memory of TAIG Barry alive. Among them, the members of the then Irish Transport and General Workers Union Cork No. 4 branch, which during the 1980s commissioned the late artist Ger O'Leary to make a vibrant banner that featured his image and led many a trade union march over the last four decades in this city. The banner ensured that TIG continued to inspire a new generation of Cork workers and activists with his message that it is, and I quote, the union that makes us strong, and that the nation without heroes is a poor nation. The nation that hath them and forgets them is beggared. Unfortunately, these words were strangely prophetic in Tyg's own case, as his memory was slowly beginning to fade. But more recently, the Cork Council of Trade Unions and colleagues in, in SIP2 successfully campaigned to have a road in Holly Hill close to Tyg's home on Blarney Street named after him. However, it is timely, and the Lord Mayor made reference to this, that we now have the new work, Utter Disloyalist, Tyg Barry and the Irish Revolution by historian Donal O'Driscoll. This excellent book ensures that the role played by Tyg in shaping this city and this country is recorded for the education of future generations. Tyg's life and the battles that he fought as a trade union and political activist bear similarities with the challenges faced by working people today. 
These included the struggle for better wages, decent housing, and to attract investment and create jobs, which he undertook as a member of the Cork Industrial Development Association and the campaigns against imperialist wars and for national independence. Tyg Barry struggled and died in the cause of national liberation, and his life and writings make it clear that he would not have settled for the staid and conservative states which emerged after the revolutionary period. He was both an admirer of the Bolshevik Revolution and a practicing Catholic. He was an agitator for the landless and the poor. He was elected to Cork Corporation in 1920 as a joint Transport and General Workers Union and Sinn Féin candidate. He believed the workers of Ireland, organized within trade unions, should play a decisive role in the social, cultural and political life of the country. He worked with the Irish Transport and General Workers Union from at least 1911, becoming a full-time trade union organiser for the union in 1919. This was a period of mass organisation of workers across Ireland, and he was central to the growth of the transport union as it recovered from the defeat of the Dublin lockout, the departure to the United States of Jim Larkin, and the execution of James Connolly after the 1916 Rising. From that year, the Irish Transport and General Workers' Union grew from 5,000 members to over 120,000 members by 1920. As an efficient and diligent union organiser, Tyg Barry played a key role in the union's growth in the Cork area. And of course, he was also a journalist and a serious thinker. And as Donal records, he chided his less socialist inclined political friends when they grew maudlin over their dead martyr, James Connolly. And he, he said, and I quote, that they had had little time for the living fighter. We must remember and celebrate Tyg Barry for the fighter that he was in the struggle for equality, for decent pay and for housing and continue to carry his banner high. Gurumila Mahagad. Thank you, Ethel. I would now like to call on Pat Horgan, who is the Vice Chairman of Cork GAA, to cover that side of Tyg's life. It's more an order, Kubla Fokhlara, Erson Kushtekunde Koki, Er Anakhaid Special to Shop. Lord Mayor, distinguished guests, relatives, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Cock County Board, it's an honour and a privilege to say a few words here this morning at the graveside of Tyg Barry. Tyg was an active member of the Gaelic Athletic Association. He was involved with a number of GA clubs and played hurling, refereed, coached, hurling and camogie, and wrote a column, uh, and wrote as a columnist. Uh, Kitog in the Cock Free Press. He even found time to write a book, Holding and How It Should Be Played, in 1916. He wrote for the Southern Star under the heading Need Shandon Steeple. There was a film made of him in 2013. He represented the Cock County Board at national level and was a huge loss to the association on his death at a young age in November 1921. Since the GA was founded in 1884, within six months of that famous first meeting, GA clubs began to spring up all over, uh, all over Ireland and people began to play the games of hurling and football with pride. The association has since its inception been closely associated with Irish nationalism. This is reinforced by the naming of some GA grounds, competitions, trophies after prominent nationalists and republicans. Tyg 
you are fondly remembered on your anniversary today on behalf of the Gaelic Athletic Association on your 100th year anniversary. Goramila Mwavagat. Thank you, Pat. 100 years on to mark the occasion, I'm going to now call on the Lord Mayor and the Chief, the Chief Executive of Cork City Council to lay a wreath on Tyler's grave. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Chief Executive. Now I'd like to call on Barry O'Shea, who is with us today, a grandnephew of Tig Barry, to lay a wreath. Thank you, Barry. Can I call on for Father Dermot Lynch to recite a decade of the rosary, please? Thank you very much. Uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I just give, uh, have the holy water there. You have, you have, you have everything. We pray, ask the Lord to bless the lovely soul of Tig, and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Thank you, Father Dermot. 
That brings to the end of our ceremony for this morning. I'd like to thank all of you for attending here today at this special ceremony in commemoration of Tiger Barry. Slong Fola.